All right, so in our last lesson, we went ahead and created the gun for our little FPS controller. This time around, we're gonna go ahead and start working on that projectile. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab the sphere that we already made for our projectile, and I thought I renamed it. Maybe I forgot. But we'll just quickly redo it. It's still sphere. Huh. I guess I got to rename it down here. Well, anyway, it's kind of bothered me. So before we go on any further, uh, it should have renamed itself here. I'm going to go ahead, drop it in. It comes out as projectile. I'm just going to delete it. And we notice it went red, and that means it's lost what it used to be connected to. I'm just going to go ahead, drag it back in, and boom, there we go. Projectile, projectile. I uh, haven't seen that before. It's a little quirk. I don't know if it's something with Unity 5.4 or not, but I just wanted to make sure mine was called projectile. It's not really going to make a difference. It's just I wanted to see it like that. But while it's in the scene, I want to go ahead and scale this a bit. So I'm just going to go right on to x y and z and let's say 0.25 by 0.25 by 0.25 now i still want to be able to see it so i don't want it too small that looks about right so i'm going to go ahead hit apply remember what that does that's right it comes down to our prefab and updates it there so that's good i'm going to go ahead delete it and let's go ahead and start making our script now, as we're making our script, there's a couple things we got to consider here. We have the gun instantiating our projectile, and it's going to have to move towards something. So the projectile itself, I'm going to have responsible for moving itself. And we don't want it to go on for infinity, so we have to have some way for it to destroy itself after. And for that, I'm just going to set a simple timer. I don't know, maybe like five seconds, something like that. That sounds good. So we want it to move, and we want it to destroy itself. Now, when we get into, let's say, um, the, the next video where we want to check to see if we hit an evil QB, it will destroy itself when it hits there as well. But first, we need the script. All right, let's hopefully we don't get any projectile dysfunctions. Welcome up, like I always do. Clear everything out. So like I said, we need a timer. And of course, that's going to be a float. We're going to be dealing with seconds, and I want to be able to have fractions of seconds. So I'm just going to call it timer. And to start off with, I'm going to have it be, I don't know, three seconds seems like a long time. And we also need another float. Does anyone remember what a float is? And oh, public float float. Can't have a name the same as a type. This is the speed. And I don't know, let's start it off moving at um, five units a second. And I forgot my F up here. Let's just go ahead, we'll put that in. Great. So we're gonna need a method to call to destroy our projectile. And for that, I'm just gonna call it die. And in here, I'm just gonna say destroy. This is a unity method or unity call. And remember we talked before about game object, the two different ones, one with a capital G, one with a small g. And the small g refers to the game object that we are attached to. That's the one we want. This is going to go ahead and say, hey, destroy our game object. And that means it's going to go through and destroy each and every single component that's attached to it as well. So that's easy. Now we need a way to call it. And we want to call it X seconds in the future. Well, the easy way to get that timer to go is be in start. Just remember, start fires off when it comes into the game. We can say invoke. We've done this one already. And the method we want to call, which is die. And how long after do we want to call it? And of course, that's just going to be our timer. There we go. So we got the death part set up. If we go ahead, save this off, jump back into Unity. I'm just going to go ahead, select the project or projectile prefab. And this time I'm going to do add component. I'm going to add the projectile this way. I'm going to keep the default values. I'm going to go ahead, save Unity, make sure we don't have anything bad happening. And it should die 
x seconds after it starts. So let's go ahead, shoot one. Oh, we've got an error here. Uh, let me see, the variable prefab of gun does not, oh, let's check this out. We'll go ahead, look at our gun. Oh, it's because I deleted that prefab and we made a new one. That means I have to reassign, that's okay. So we'll go ahead, start it back up. And now when we shoot, it should hang around for three seconds and disappear. And it did. So we'll shoot a bunch of them out and should just see them going off. There we go. So we know the death part's working, at least as far as the time death goes. Now we want it to actually move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do that in update. Now we talked about update before. An update fires off every frame. So this is actually great. Every frame we can have our cube move a little bit forward uh, according to the direction it's facing. And remember forward is always on that Z axis. So it doesn't matter what direction it's facing. That's the direction we want it to move at. So we'll go ahead, open up our update. Well, I guess create our update. And all we have to do is go ahead and get our transform dot position. And we want to add to it. And we can go ahead and do a plus equals. That means go ahead and take our transform position and add something to it. I'm not sure if you heard the alarms. We have a bit of flash flooding going on. Hopefully I can edit that screeching out. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to add something to it. Now, what do we want to add to it? Well, again, we can just do transform dot forward, which means move one unit forward. But we're going to multiply that by our speed. And just by doing that, uh, we're going to go ahead and move forward X amount of units every frame. And we don't want that because everyone's computer is going to run at a different frame rate. But luckily we have a way to normalize the speed at which objects move according to the frame rate. And for that, we'll just take whatever it is we're doing in update and do time dot delta time. Now what this does is it goes ahead and gets the the difference in time between the last frame and this frame. And you can go ahead and multiply whatever we're doing here. So it's a very small number. Well, provided you have a fast enough frame rate, it's going to be a small number. That way there, the projectile is going to move at the same speed regardless of the frame rate you're going at. Hopefully that makes sense. If uh, you need a better explanation, uh, go ahead, let me know down below. You can also go ahead, highlight it, and hit Command apostrophe to bring up the documentation time dot delta time maybe this gives you a bit better but anyway let me know down below if you need a better explanation and we're just going to go ahead and save that and we're going to go back into unity now it should move forward so i'm going to go ahead start the game back up shoot and uh it's not going the right way and i think i know what happened I think I'm still using Quaternion Identity in the gun script. Let me go check that out. Head back into Mono Develop, go over to our gun script, and sure enough, Quaternion Identity, uh, we don't want that anymore. We want it to, to have the rotation of whatever our gun is pointing at, or in this case, the gun muzzle. So we're actually going to say Transform Rotation, and that way, where, wherever the gun is pointing, that's the direction we're going to fire in. So we'll go ahead, we'll stop that off. Go ahead, hit play. And now when we start it off, regardless of the direction we're pointing at, we'll see it fly. And of course, if you watch over here, you'll see them disappear. And as fast as we can click, we can get them. All right. In the next video, let's go ahead and start taking a look at some collisions.